even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. Hello, me monster the lovers, and welcome to WOM1 World of Monsters, where today we discuss the werewolf. This is the complete, refined, and updated video covering everything you've ever wanted, needed to know about werewolves and more, with past and future, present, well for you still past, but more recent, Arthur. I hope you enjoy the both of us and the tons of information presented here on our beloved monster. Let's begin. The history of the werewolf has a worldwide beginning, meaning there is no specific pinpointed area that we can find where the history begins. There are different stories from almost all parts of the world and of the old cultures. In Old English, werewolf means adult human male. That's what were means. And wolf, W-U-L-F, means wolf. So adult human male, wolf. Hmm. Lycanthrope, lycanthrope, lycanthropy. If you break that word down, lycos means wolf and anthropes mean man. So again, wolf, man, lycanthrope, or lycanthrope. Basically, these creatures have the ability to shapeshift from human form to wolf form, or to human-wolf hybrid form. One of the earliest written accounts of the werewolf in 440 BC, the Nuri or Navari Western Baltic people were mentioned by witnesses to change into wolves for a few days once a year. These notes may be found in Herodotus's and Pomponius's writings. And about 500 years later, we hear about King Lycan or Lycian. This story originates from Greece, and it is about Zeus coming to dinner to the king's palace. And the king is quite skeptical of gods and tries to test whether this is the real Zeus, whether it is a real god or if it's just another human. So what he does is he tries to feed Zeus human meat. Zeus, with his power and rather clever approach to this issue, punished the king by turning him into a werewolf. Therefore, he can enjoy feasting on human flesh until the end of his days. Then we go into the Middle Ages, where in the Middle Ages, as you know, we had many witch trials and the more rare, the werewolf trials, all stemming to the same evil, Satan. And his predicaments and issues grew as religion grew and needed to seek out a foe for humanity to focus on and shake their fists at. Basically, these days we can look back and see that any savage sort of beastly related human behavior would excite this term of werewolf. Just as from the witch hunting perspective, anytime they would speak of something more nature-based or not so Catholic Christian indoctrinated, everything else would be viewed as witches and spells and curses and such. So any kind of brutal, beastly behavior such as large mass killings, these people would be related quickly to werewolves and would therefore go through werewolf trials relating people to the beast all under the influences of Satan. Possibly the earliest accounts of official lycanthropy convictions took place in 1521, France, when a supposed wolf attack led to three men who were then arrested and tortured, eventually confessing to being werewolves. Makes you wonder, what sort of false craziness would you confess to under the influence of excruciating pain? Something to consider. Personally, if I were alive during the 1700s or some hundred years prior, I wouldn't be worrying about what's lurking in the wild forest, but rather whom I may have offended and how strong their influence is. But then again, to this day, how much have things really changed in that department of our societies? German farmer Peter Stubb is a well-known case in which he confessed to making a deal with the devil from which he received a belt allowing him to shapeshift, thereafter killing and eating many human victims over the course of 25 years. Even earlier than these accounts, in 1428, around 370 people were killed in Switzerland, mostly women due to accusations of being witches. Lycanthropy was a rare but mentioned topic here, more likely making this period the actual first to have records of werewolf or werewolf-related trials. 
and the whereabouts of present-day Estonia, between 1527 and 1725, 18 women and 13 men were prime suspects of being wolf shapeshifters, and back to France, somewhere in the realm of 30,000 people were accused of lycanthropy in the span of a 110-year period. Throughout these claims, people were also reported to have turned into bears. Go figure. Demonization of any living creature able to hurt us as much as we could hurt them was indeed rampant then, and well, unfortunately continues to be to this day, to some degree. Since there have been so many accusations over the ages, how did one go about identifying a werewolf? Other than from abnormal behavior, you may have heard of the unibrow being a point of evidence or having hairy palms, but these following attributes also played a part in detecting a werewolf. Dry eyes and mouth, hair under the tongue, pale skin, glowing eyes, hair underneath skin, a painful one to explore, the scar of a pentagram somewhere on the body, the middle finger being shorter than the index, and that if you throw a piece of iron or steel over it, when in wolf form, it will change back to human form. At that time, the wolf's carnivorous nature and aggression and sort of eerie howling at night created a certain superstition around it, and those types of human behaviors started being linked to them. Later, around the 18th to 19th century, various scientists started looking deeper into this and took upon the notion of lycanthropy being a medical or mental issue, therefore relating rabies as a possible route to these situations, or what also became known as clinical lycanthropy disorder, during which a person believes themselves to go wild and to physically turn and transform into a werewolf themselves. Also, even Down syndrome was a disorder that was speculated to be linked to these werewolf phenomena. There was also a specific type of fungus that would grow on rye bread and when eaten would cause hallucinations and other symptoms that could have related to the behavior of wild and crazy werewolves. In fact, various witch remedies of the times may have been responsible for such hallucinations as well. Even Roman poet Virgil wrote of a man who used herbs and poisons to turn himself into a wolf, after which he began howling and living in the woods. After lycanthropy rose the term werewolf syndrome, which was used for the condition today referred to as hypertrichosis, which may be localized with thick hairs growing over a specific part of the body, such as the face, or being outspread covering most of the body. Therefore, people with the various types of this condition also fell victim to the false claims. Also, there are beliefs that follow certain tribes where they believe that the totem animal or animal spirit, such as the wolf spirit, would enter the human human body and slowly envelop that person with their characteristics and possibly their physical features. Going into such an outlook, we'll discuss a little bit about the Wisconsin tribe, which is another fascinating story in the way of history. The Wisconsin tribe, which later may have been known as the Fox tribe, tells of a spirit god named Wisakachek, and Wisakachek was a shapeshifter. He could shapeshift into any animal he desired. One day as Wisakachek was strolling the forests in human form, he met a young couple of boys that were out hunting. He presented himself to them as a poor man. The boys saw this, and one of them offered him some of their deer meat that they have collected earlier on. Later in the story, the boys are less successful in hunting, and the spirit god saw this. And since the boys helped him when he appeared in need, he gave the boys a power, a power to transform into wolf form any time they so choose, and back in the human form. In this form, the boys had a much easier chance of hunting down deer and food for their tribe to survive on. Now, unfortunately, in the story, one of the boys has a fight, a fight with another village boy, a regular human boy, and he turns into his wolf form and kills him. The spirit god finds out. He plays is a curse on him which will turn the boy into a werewolf uncontrollably every night for the rest of his life. And the other boy that had the ability to shapeshift went into another path of adventure because they were both banned out of that village. This god spirit, Wisakashik, was known as the grandfather or the father or root of the werewolf stories. The Epic of Gilgamesh, written over 3,000 years ago, is also regarded as one of the first. 
which features a woman that turned her previous lover into a wolf. Now there are many stories all over the world. I just chose a couple to explain here because the video would be much, much longer. But be sure to keep an eye out more of such werewolf stories here later on in the channel. Let's talk about some transforming theories. Some tales describe that you can maybe transform into a werewolf by drinking water that has been touched by a wolf, being bitten by a wolf, by having werewolf parents that carry on the genetics to their offspring, by being cursed, or by putting on a special type of belt or girdle, or a fascinating one, by drinking water out of the footprint of a wolf, or also by drinking out of enchanted streams, and so on and so forth. There are many more out there to be discovered. There are many movies that demonstrate these transformations well, and I've gone in depth on quite a few of them. See and save this playlist of all my uploads thus far on Werewolf transformations. The full moon theory, where the werewolf only transforms under a full moon, came much, much later in history through the pop culture escapes. Naturally, wolves actually do not often howl under the moon, as they don't want to be discovered. Howling is their way of communicating to each other, and it isn't to be done out in the open, where it could ruin their strategies of attack on their prey. Also, silver being a great enemy of werewolves and silver bullets, that also came much later in stories. Or did it? 1764 marks the first year the Beast of Gevaden, or Juvodon, attacked in Germany. It was described as being like a wolf, but not a wolf. By the end of the year, it had killed enough people that theories began to rise that it wasn't alone. Eventually, Jean Chastel, a local hunter, was credited for killing it, allegedly with silver ammo. This notion was again mentioned in 1933's The Werewolf of Paris novel, though it wasn't lethal. But it didn't really become popularized until after Kurt Seal Max, script for The Wolfman of 1941. Other than silver, decapitation and removing of the heart were the only ways to kill a werewolf. If we look into the Asian culture, we don't hear much of werewolves, but we do hear of were cats. As of course in Asia, the larger carnivores are indeed bears and large felines such as tigers and panthers. Again, looking back in history in these areas, it can be speculated that when people showed this highly aggressive behavior, which could have been linked to certain disorders that were then unknown, the best way people could relate and understand what these people were experiencing was to relate them to aggressive wild creatures out there. After about 1448, more child-eating type of crazy behavior increased and sightings of werewolves, up until the current taboo subcultures out there. Reports of werewolves throughout the world may only differ slightly as far as appearance goes, some larger, some smaller, while others very dark. But as far as possibilities and our creations, we can go from black to white furs, browns, reds to yellow furs. Of course, we can also have blotches within the fur or stripes, but not too many, just sort of blended out, unclear stripes, especially up closer to the mane of the wolf, going down the neck. Also, the ear appearance can have a darker back and a lighter furred underbelly area, or the opposite, creating a darker underbelly area and a lighter back furred area. You can play around with it and figure out what kind of environment is your werewolf in, and therefore how would the camouflage work. Size, we're talking about large wolves being under 200 pounds. That is, if you are undertaking the theology of your werewolf changing from human form into wolf form, which is a theory just as you heard with the Wisconsin tribe, or if you're taking on more of the notion that your werewolf transforms into a human-wolf hybrid. So first of all, if we're talking about wolf form, consider the size, because there are tales of werewolves such as that, that change into basically what we know as dire wolf, rather large size, huge wolves. They're still quadruped creatures, but much larger than a regular wolf. For a much more in-depth look at the different types of werewolves out there. I made this classification video which breaks down their physiological diversity very clearly. Now if we're talking about hybrid werewolves, then I would say a big, healthy, strong werewolf. We're talking about 10 feet in height. We're talking probably a thousand pounds, pretty muscular, or on a full stomach. And of course, you can play around with that. It's all magical stuff, but you don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to turn a five-foot human into a 20-foot werewolf unless they got some serious curse or 
or a spell or enchantment. Or if you want to set magic or the unexplainable aside, consider viruses or bacteria as your answer to lycanthropy. The anatomy of the werewolf in wolf form is as you would imagine comparing to regular wolves, but then the werewolf hybrid has these distinct features. They probably have a nice thick neck with a bit of a mane. The legs would be digitigrade, so if you want to practice being a werewolf for cosplay, practice walking on your toes. Plus, it's quite a nice exercise for your calves. Yeah. So it's gonna have those types of legs, it's gonna have a nice furry tail, and all that good stuff. Oftentimes, you see werewolves kind of being stretched out and kind of thin, because it makes sense when it's transforming from a smaller human, but also consider thick, fat werewolves. Maybe a, a fat humanoid that transforms into a really thick, muscular werewolf and all that fatness is just an illusion of that human. Sort of comparing to the clown in the Spawn comic books, where it changes into the big violator. All right, I digress. The whole necessity of a full moon idea is another area that could use some contemplation or explanation. After all, this is just reflected sunlight, so what makes it, or could make it, so special? What would stop other sources of equal level of lighting from triggering the transformation? Who says something would have to? Or maybe it doesn't have any anything to do with the moon, but rather a day cycle where every 28 days this biological event has to occur. We have indeed seen the full moon have effects on wildlife such as we see in the increase of breeding of coral, or crabs stocking up for the solar occasion to avoid predators. Lions, on the other hand, have been found to hunt less during these nights. Would a werewolf be able to hypnotize itself into believing there was a full moon in order to shift? Is it there for mental in nature? Is it more logical to disregard it, or possibly replace it with another solar occurrence or shift upon the world, such as magnetic changes? As we know, the wolf and canines are rather territorial and they work in packs. We can take that mentality and develop it more thinking about clans and specific smaller groups. There would be a hierarchical system. They would be rather territorial. Would there be much bloodlust within their nature? Would they have a berserker mode when they're transformed? Or would they still be relaxed and regularly mentally functioning characters? So those are things to think about. Just because all those stories talk about werewolves getting crazy when in hybrid form doesn't mean your werewolf has to be like so. Even though I like that notion of that craziness, you can keep your werewolf still intelligent just taking on the benefits. Or maybe throughout ages of evolution, your werewolves in your clan have developed to be able to transform and still keep their intellectual outlooks. Also going with being territorial may be some selfishness. Classification, shapeshifter, hybrid mammal, or humanoid beast shapeshifter mammal. When in wolf form or werewolf form, they would have the instincts of a wolf, the senses, the increased strength. Wolves have this ability to make noises so that the victim or their enemy feels as they are surrounded by many wolves, when in fact they are surrounded by only one or two because of this sound that they create. Also, they have claws and teeth. They have the ability to intelligently communicate in far distances in a way that is very distinct to their race and extremely difficult to decode by others. Others. They can even create growls that are only picked up with their highly sensitive ears for large distances within the forest. They are also protected by fur. Why do male lions have manes and such things? Because that extra thickness and length of fur actually protects the neck. Also with those claws, they'll be good at climbing, climbing trees, walls, jumping far distances, moving at incredible speeds and intense awareness. Also in that transformation is that freedom and carelessness, and again, possibly that berserker craziness that increases all those abilities even more that have been mentioned. And back to communication, don't forget about howling, team attacks and strategies in battle and hunting. Weaknesses, possibly lack of control. If you're following that ideology, then yes, once in werewolf form, they enter this berserk crazy mode where they lose control of their thoughts, their self-awareness, their morals and ethics go out the window and they become this crazed, powerful beast. Or not. Also, do they have the ability to change at will? Or do they only change at certain times? Like once a year, or every night, or during only full moons, or when they get angry? That is also quite a large disadvantage. Is the transformation painful? Is it long? Do they expose themselves to easy attack during transformations? Or are they quick? 
Also, because of the nature of shape-shifting and the size and shape changes, armor and weapons would be hard to use, but adjustable or custom armor is possible that changes and fits the creature as it transforms. Of course, regular clothes and materials would be ripped away, but possibly magical armor and such stretchable materials and things and magical items could possibly continue on protecting the werewolf. And also memory loss and all sense of fellowship, friendship, love, is that all lost when they enter that berserker stage? Things to be considered as their weakness. As we already mentioned, looking at the wolf's life, we have them working in packs and being territorial. Therefore, we can safely relate this type of thinking to the werewolf, building upon how bloodlines would work and how important bloodlines would be in hierarchy and having a leader in the group and such. And how would leaders be chosen? Would it be through diplomacy or brutal ways such as fighting? Only the strong survive and lead type of ideology. All right, now going into culture, as we've discussed, we have the are they more warrior based? Are they sort of tribal? Or have they evolved beyond that sort of brutal lifestyle? Are they more animalistic? If it's a large tribe of people like we have in the underworld movies, or do they remain intelligent when in human form, but very beastly and animalistic when they transform? But if they have a way in their society to deal with that way of living, are they protective? Are they nocturnal? As we know, wolves often hunt and scavenge at night. So is your werewolf race or character more nocturnal and quite sleepy during the day? Or are they prone to take power naps whenever needed? Werewolves being carnivores and borderline omnivorous, they would probably be hunters and scavengers, as well as having the ability, most likely, to cook up something a little bit more vegetable and fruit based or mixed with their love of meat. Culinary arts can exist in any race out there intelligent enough to cook for themselves. Again, as we discussed in the weaknesses, armor and weapons are possible, but they would have to be modified or changeable to fit so that they work both when they are in human form or when they have been shape-shifted. And remember, we're talking here of a race of werewolves composing of men and women like and through. Would magic be a part of their life? I'd say quite possibly. Shaman Shamanism, druidism, or druidry, those could be things that play a part. But do they lose the ability to control it when they transform into werewolves? As that is such a magical event, maybe it would increase some buffs or attacks and such things. Or possibly they can only cast certain spells when in werewolf form, and other certain spells when in human form. Allies, enemies, and factions. I would say probably only similar species. As they are carnivorous in nature, it would be tough for them to comfortably hold a long relationship with another their race out there, but possibly were races such as were felines or were foxes, something like that. It's a possibility. They don't have to be mindless beasts. It all depends how long your race has been existing for and how wise they have become and how much they have developed. All right, now we come to the power level. Yes, power level. One, being a cockroach. Five, being a giant. And 10, being a celestial being able to control time and space. Yes, I would put the werewolf down as a whore. That's right, having good battles with ogres, trolls, and griffin out there. Creatures that are roughly the same size and have a good bit of aggression to them. Their battle would probably consist of pouncing, the advantage of being extra crazy aggressive, that high energy explosiveness, Although these things can also be a downfall to their attack. So if battling a werewolf, you may want to get in the position of impaling one, as that may be a win or lose situation right there. You can be sure they'll most likely pounce on you unless they have pretty good control over that aggression. Again, Silver, do you want to have that as a weakness of a werewolf in your stories? And again, the only change during a full moon thing, unless you'd rather let that go. And as always, with furry animals like this, Fire. Fire would be quite something to threaten them with, as you know how flammable hair can be. As for the symbolism surrounding the werewolf, unlike with many folklore monsters, is younger than its earliest of mentionings. Psychologically, the transformation could be viewed as the release of suppressed feelings or breakout of an anxious state into one of uncontrolled frenzy. The tension, which we could release at times, but hold on to in order to keep our jobs or relationships. If it is a curse, then a punishment to drive your behaviors overboard in which, without exercising the outmost level of self-control, you will be doomed and hunted down by your fellow 
species. Often it was also metaphorically or literally used to represent the process of a child entering the stage of adolescence, where hormones jump and reproduction becomes a possibility. Also, the duality of this beast may be the expression of the personalities and contrasting behaviors within most of us. I've actually done a video about exploring the psychology of Marvel's Venom, which has points that relate very closely to this topic as well. Check that out, particularly if you find yourself drawn to characters such as Venom, the Werewolf, and Hulk. Andicus. Alright, let's go into some similar beasts out there. There's not too many, so I don't want to go overboard with this, but let's explore these. Starting with the dogmen and the like of cryptozoology. We got all other were beasts, such as were cats, were boar, were rats, anything that can shapeshift from human to animal, we can say that's somewhat related to this. Some concepts of the Wendigo, the Kitsune Fox of Japan, the Leshi, Selkie, which specifically is basically a were seal. Berserkers were a tribe of human humans known to go crazy when in battle and enter berserker mode during which their bodies were also known to transform. We have the shape-shifting Puka fairy. Then we have the Encantado, which is a dolphin or sea snake shapeshifter from human form. Also the Aswang of the Philippines, which was a black dog or bear shapeshifter. Of course we can relate vampires because of the concepts of their shapeshifting abilities. Then we have all those hybrid monsters such as Satyr, Fawn, Minotaur, or centaur and the gorgons and many others then we have the saiyans what happens to them at a full moon also we have the orso of dragonlance draconians being a certain hybrid themselves the skorenoi ratlings another hybrid the tikbalang beastmen harpies as more hybrid creatures and then of course the dire wolf which are basically huge wolves and then again going into animals we got all the canine species all right, let's look into some sources. The sources are very, very many. Although the werewolf was actually not as famous as other Hollywood monsters for quite some time due to there not being any great works of literature pertaining to it. We have cartoons, comic books, series, movies, games. The werewolf has been all over the place. The list of movies I found that contain werewolves contains over 150 titles. Or way over. Closer to 400 as I've presented in this video featuring every werewolf of every movie ever and its counterpart of movies that I missed. There you will see the first movie to feature a werewolf as well as the first to feature the hybrid form. Hint, it wasn't the Wolfman. For now, I'll mention the more notable of releases. First of all, The Wolfman from 1941, probably the most iconic look for the werewolf. A must-see for any fan. Howling, parts 1 through 8. Wolf from 1994 with Jack Nicholson. The Underworld movies. And as one of the top rated out there, showing the werewolf in a great way, that aggressive, crazy manner that I like to see them as. An American Werewolf in London of 1981. And then going into the lighter side, Teen Wolf, the original Teen Wolf, a sort of light-hearted werewolf movie, but has some great concepts in it as well. Then we got Twilight. Yes, I mentioned Twilight, because don't forget that there was actually a tribe and many other beliefs that believed werewolves were humans that would shapeshift into actual wolf form, regular wolf form, or the large ones as we mentioned. So Twilight did do a decent representation of that. Bad Moon. Bad Moon was another one I rather enjoyed. Some say possibly underrated, but do check it out. That's how a werewolf should look of 1996 and the Being Human TV series which covers some pretty interesting aspects of the werewolf concept. And finally I would like to mention the latest best in my opinion which is The Wolfman of 2010. Excellent actors and they took on the original werewolf appearance of the 1941 The Wolfman movie turning it into a violent bloody testosterone leaking crazy ride. So do check that one out. Thank you Christian Toby Ray Tammy Cloud, Joseph, Patrick, Tim, and Matthew for keeping our fires ablaze. Our Patreon side of things offers exclusivity for your support, and if the community grows big enough, I may just turn into a werewolf and film it. It's not an easy or cheap process, if you know what I mean. And if you are indeed a fan of werewolves, then you are in the right place. I have many, many videos on them, as well as other monsters you probably love. I have been, am, and will be Monster Master Arthur. See you again soon. <laughs>